Welcome everyone again to the Hemophilia Council of California's Advocacy and Public Policy webinar, saying hello to telehealth. Um, my name is Lynn Kinst. I'm the Executive Director of the Hemophilia Council, and I'm glad to have you join us today. Um, I want to introduce Peter and Paula, who are part of the treatments team at the UC San Diego Hemophilia Thrombosis Treatment Center. Hello, everyone. Again, my name is Paula, and I work at UC San Diego Health Hemophilia and Thrombosis Treatment Center. Thank you, Peter. So telemedicine is a new way to connect with your healthcare provider. And with this evolving technology, telemedicine is a convenient way to address health concerns at the comfort of your home, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. There are different types of telemedicine visits, such as patients coming in for a routine or annual follow-up visits, new patients who are establishing care with no acute symptoms, patients with non-emergent symptoms during and after treatment that can be managed remotely, or those who are returning for a follow-up visit to review imaging or test results that do not require an in-person intervention. And lastly, patients in active treatment who need a prescription medication where the prescriptions can be refilled electronically. As patients, think of the reason why you are being seen. Is it for a long-term or an acute issue? Are you feeling sick? Or do you think you may have an acute bleed? Do you have an upcoming procedure or surgery and will need a preoperative clearance? If so, have the details ready of the procedure, your provider's contact information who will be performing the procedure, and the date and time for coordination of care with the Hemophilia Treatment Center. Some of the things that patients can think about is the problem. For example, if you think you may have a bleed, Take note when the problem started, what symptoms you are experiencing, is it feeling better or worse? Have you tried medications such as factor, oral antifibrinolytic, or home remedies? Did it make it better or worse? If you're using factor products, take note how much you use and how much you have left and if what you have at home are not expired and let your provider know if you would need more. So the more details that you provide, the more helpful it will be for the provider to determine the next course of action. And then depending on your symptoms, the provider may ask you to come in for an in-person visit if the issue can be taken care of in clinic to avoid emergency department visits or hospitalization. Next slide, please. So etiquette of telemedicine. Treat your telehealth visit as if it's an in-person appointment, like what Peter had already stated. It's important to be responsible and to be punctual for your telemedicine appointment. This shows that you value and respect your time as well as the time of others. So being on time allows you to make the most out of your session and is a way to be considerate of other patients who are waiting to be seen after you. As Peter had noted earlier, wear loose and comfortable clothing. Try to dress as if you were seeing your provider in person. We have had instances where a patient was shirtless, roaming around in his boxers, and performing other tasks while talking to the healthcare team, which can be very distracting. It's a good idea to wear appropriate bottoms in case the provider or the physical therapist asks you to stand up to assess your gait, your lower extremities, or other parts of your body that cannot be initially seen at the beginning of the visit. Next slide, please. Third, please avoid taking your telemedicine visit in your car while driving. I know that Peter had already touched up on this and it's really not a safe practice to be driving while talking to your provider. If for whatever reason you have to take the visit in your car, please pull over at a safe place and turn off all loud music. It's ideal to have a quiet and dedicated space for your virtual visit and in an environment that is free as possible from privacy concerns. And lastly, align your camera where your face can be completely seen by the healthcare provider. Whether you're using an integrated or external camera, try to set up the camera at an eye level. This will make it easier to make eye contact with your provider and ensure that they also feel that you're also engaging with them. Bright lights, such as natural lighting from windows, can produce a glare. So if possible, please close the shade. 
If you would like your family member or caretaker to join the visit, then ensure that their faces are also seen on video if they have concerns related to your healthcare. And in addition, please avoid pacing back and forth and walking around the room during the visit. This can also be very distracting and can oftentimes affect the audio and the visual connectivity. And next slide, please. So just a quick recap, make sure you have the right technology. Understanding the platform that you will be using for the visit ahead of time will reduce avoidable, uh, avoidable delay. And by knowing how the technology works, whether it's MyChart, Doximity, or Zoom, and knowing how to use it the day ahead of time, time will make your visit more meaningful in such a way that you won't have to spend too much time setting up the telemedicine, uh, telemedicine visit, but rather focusing on the visit itself and your health. If you are new to telemedicine, consider a practice run with a friend or a family member so you're comfortable with the equipment. Second, make sure you can hear them using headphones or earbuds instead of your device's microphone and speaker will often um, produce a better sound and clarity and provides more privacy, especially if you are other, um, if you are around other people in your household. And third, have all your medication information ready. Be prepared with a list of your prescriptions, over-the-counter medicines, or supplements you're currently taking. If you have a pharmacy that you would like to use, have the name and the address handy in case your provider um, prescribes a new medication. And collecting certain information at home, such as weight, for example, is very important, especially for those who are in clotting factors or monoclonal antibody products for dosing is weight-based. Providing us with your most current accurate weight will allow the providers to prescribe appropriate amount of clotting factors. The next one is be prepared with a list of talking points. Take note of your symptoms or concerns before your call begins so that you don't forget to mention anything and be ready to tell your provider exactly what you are experiencing. If this take pictures that might be useful, sending a photo via your medical record also helps the provider assess any injuries or other visible issues. And lastly, make sure you are on time for your appointment. Um, we cannot emphasize how much, uh, how important this is because it really will be helpful um, if everyone is on time, especially on a telemedicine visit. So make sure to answer your provider's call at the scheduled time and complete any required paperwork ahead of time. And don't forget for any emergency, call 911 and don't schedule a telemedicine visit. So um, telemedicine visit allows you know, patients to receive the best care possible at the comforts of your own home. And the goal is for you to have a positive experience. The video portion allows the providers to pick up on certain aspects of the patient's condition or even some specific clinical examination findings that cannot be simp uh, simply gathered by phone. However, there are certain limitations such as completing a full physical exam and medical procedures, which obviously must be done in person. Our presentation ends here. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask and we'll do our best to answer them. Wonderful, thank you both. Um, I also briefly wanted to thank um, the, our webinar series sponsors, Takeda, Biomarin, HF Healthcare, and Sanofi Genzyme, who um, made this program possible. Um, and so with that, I just want to thank all of you for joining us today. Um, again, if, if you have issues or concerns, um, we're happy to help you here at the Hemophilia Council. So please don't hesitate to reach out to you, us if we can be of assistance. And um, thank you again to Peter and Paula. I know you guys have a very busy clinic schedule working with patients. So we appreciate your time putting this presentation together and joining us today. Well, thank you for having us. It was a pleasure. Thank you all for being here and uh, we will see you next month. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.